corona pandemic has created a very unprecedented situation not just in india but world across but let's go over to a film maker mr hao wu who actually filmed the first 76 days in the epicenter of corona that's one mr hu is this with us right now mr hu welcome to india tv thanks for having me thanks for having me uh my first question it was a unprecedented situation that you were faced in when you were visiting china but during those days when you were there and you saw what was unfolding what exactly went through your mind as to prompt you or you know uh, encourage you to shoot a documentary of the suffering of the people as corona unfolded in china so i'm normally based in new york i live in new york city now on january 23rd this year i flew back to china to visit shanghai uh, to spend chinese new year with my family who's living there and uh, that was the day when wuhan was first put under a lockdown which lasted 76 days So when I first arrived in Shanghai, even though Shanghai is far away from Wuhan and is not under official lockdown, but entire country of China pretty much uh, voluntarily shut down. And it was surreal to be walking in the street and seeing very few cars, no pedestrians. Uh, it really felt looked like a zombie apocalyptic movie set. So that was, but at that time, it still felt kind of unreal to me. Uh, once i came back to the us in early february when a us network approached me to make a film about this emerging coronavirus outbreak i jumped down because that has affected i witnessed its impact on the country firsthand uh who uh let me just begin by asking you that the excerpts of the film that i have seen the visuals are disturbing not just disturbing they're virtually uh stir your soul as to the amount of pain and trauma that people would have suffered in one how did that come through to you and how have you presented the same to the audiences so once the us network approached me to make a film about this uh, coronavirus outbreak uh which by the way they dropped out later on so i had to finish the film by myself independently i reached out to um over a dozen filmmakers who have been filming in Wuhan since the start of the lockdown and then really quickly i found my two co-directors whose footage just shocked me because they were right there in the center of action they were capturing life and death um and they were just like so both raw and emotionally moving so that's i started collaborating with them but i think for them it was a uh, extremely difficult filming situation because they had to wear put on their um protective gears and you know cover from head to toe and uh, you know it right. was really uncomfortable it was really dangerous uh, but i think they stay there it's almost like a war zone for them they just they are trying to document history uh, happening right in front of their eyes so i you know i hugely admire my co-director for risking their own lives to to capture that on camera if i were to just take you to the uh, opening sequence of your f- documentary uh, there's a lady who's waiting for her father who's no more and he's all packed up in his suit because the dead body has to be taken away and the lady just is dying to see the last sights of her father this emotional trauma is this what really happened is this what happened in one where people just could not even bid farewell to their loved ones yes absolutely that's what's happening not just in china though but worldwide when people die of covid-19 they usually die alone because of um to protect you know their family from getting infected that to me is one of the most heartbreaking aspect of this uh, pandemic uh, where you know um, you cannot visit your loved ones even when they are um, dying you, personally my grandpa that died not of covid-19 but died of liver cancer um soon after chinese new year back in march uh, i couldn't visit him because there was such 
you know, a heavy travel restriction between China and US by that point. So that scene really shook me. Whenever I edited that scene, I will cry. Yeah. Now, if I were to ask you to uh, just bring it aloud to our viewers, what transpired within these 76 days in one? How would you describe that? Was it something which people could, you know, understand if uh, they are not placed in that situation? Or would, it, would you call it a very unprecedented situation, a very unprecedented fold of events that took place, something which is beyond imagination? Yeah, it was surely unprecedented. I think in modern history, we never had to really put an entire city, a city of 11 million people under a complete lockdown where there's no traffic in or out. So that was truly unprecedented. Um, it was, it's hard. One of the reasons I didn't exactly retell the step-by-step -step what changed during the lockdown was because it was the first time that uh, uh, the co coronavirus outbreak happened. There was very little known about how dangerous, how transmissible this virus was. And uh, I think, I don't think the government was very well prepared to handle the lockdown at the very beginning either. So there's a lot of confusion and day from day to day, something they were changing, trying to adapt to change the regular, you know, sort of like the underground regulation. And the, uh, the residents in Wuhan were also a lot of, in the very beginning were really fearful. Um, they were really confused. So, but then in the film 76 days, rather than retelling the step-by-step yeah. step, what happened, I tried to capture the emotional arc of the city trying to survive a lockdown. Now let's talk about the, uh, the doctors, the nursing staff, the hospitals, because that's the real scene of action. That's where everything unfolds. What kind of trauma do you think the doctors went through, the nursing staff, as to how to handle people, people who are agitated, people who are grieving, people who are infected, people who do not know what future lies ahead of them? It, it must be chaotic. Yeah, it was extremely chaotic and also because during the lockdown, nobody knew how long the lockdown would last. Uh, nobody yeah. knew when will the Chinese, the Chinese nation will be able to put the coronavirus under control. So, so for, for, the, for the medical workers, and first of all, they are physically exhausted. They have very long shifts. And then during their shift, they could, bear, they could not even go to the bathroom because once you go to the bathroom, take out your you know, per personal protective equipment, your suits, you cannot go back into the contamination zone again because all those PPEs were rationed, especially at the beginning of this outbreak. Right. And at the same time, it's really emotionally draining to try to save somebody and at the beginning of the lockdown and not be able to save them eventually. So I, I think um, many of the medical staff, to be honest, currently are under some kind of post-traumatic stress. Um, as, you know, a disorder because it's hard to recover from that, to see life and death right. on a daily basis. And how would you describe uh, through the shots that you saw uh, people? Because uh, most of the people would be unaware of what's really affecting them. While people had a relative experience of SARS, swine flu, bird flu, but nobody really knew what uh, corona is going to do. COVID-19 is something which is unprecedented. So from the shoot which you saw through your other two colleagues, how do you understand the panic or the confusion or the absolute madness and craziness within the people? Yes, uh, there was a lot of confusion um, just because data were so limited at the beginning. Um, I think based on what I saw, because I was constantly in touch with people, not just in Wuhan, but in the rest of China as well, during the lockdown period. I think that people went through an emotional roller coaster. Um, you know, at the very beginning, it was, people were so fearful, uh, people traveling from Wuhan, if, even if they're originally from Wuhan, haven't lived there for a while, some of them were being ostracized in other cities, being turned away just because people feel like they may carry, carry the virus. Uh, but I think later on, as, in, as 
the residents in Wuhan, also in China, got more information. I, 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 I yes. saw more and more people reaching out, trying to help each other. I, I also like uh, this human connection, trying to support each other. That's also very heartwarming to observe. Precisely. There's a, a quote from one of your interviews, which I would just read out to you. And I would like you to slightly elaborate the same, because uh, in India, we are also going through a very unprecedented corona crisis. We have more than uh, 5 million people who have been infected by corona. I'm just reading out your text, which I have. It became increasingly clear that the local government had lied and suppressed whistleblowers to conceal the outbreak. It also became apparent that the situation was dire in one. People were dying, hospitals were overwhelmed, medical personnel did not have adequate protection. So they were getting sick and dying. The country was angry. I was angry. Why were you angry, Juan? Yeah, at the very beginning, like I mentioned in the press notes, uh, the entire country was angry um, because it was why everybody was asking the question why it was so mismanaged in the beginning in the initial response to this outbreak, why we were not ready to combat this. So that was because in the very beginning, there's very little information publicly available about how dangerous this truly is. Uh, yes, that's absolutely. But what I think kind of changed my point of view on this issue was when the pandemic hit New York. I was in March, I was in New York filming then. Then to my big shock, I found the same story, the same emotional response from the residents happening in the US all over again. It's like people in the US were asking, why are we not ready? We have known about this virus existing in China, this outbreak in China for a long time. Why isn't the US ready? So that kind of gradually made me want to take a step back and we re-examine the situation and asking the question is that why are human societies always underprepared for a big catastrophe like a pandemic? Precisely, you have a valid point too, but let me just take you back to what you experienced in China. Do you think that if there was, if you set aside the national pride, things could have been handled in a much better way by the government? People would have been more assuaged. People would have had a better helping hand from the government. Could that have been possible? That's a big question because right now, so far, um, originally when I started this project, I did want to probe these questions, which you laid out. Um, but really quickly, like I mentioned, once the uh, pandemic hit New York, I decided maybe every society will be underprepared to some degree. Secondly, Looking back, it's really hard to understand some of the early decision makings uh, at the different government level, uh, you know, levels of the government. So there's very little investigative journalism I can do. Thirdly, as a right. filmmaker, I've always been focused on the human experience, human stories. And then whether I, in my film, I try to shy away from repeating what's already been well covered in news media, news analysis. So that's why I decided in my film to really focus on the human experience. Now, if you were to just go back to the fact that this is a film about human experience, uh, how would you explain that to somebody who possibly has not understood the magnanimity of the crisis? In the sense, uh, possibly there are countries which have learned better with the experiences that they had with other countries. Through your film, how do you convey that? What is the, if I were to just put it across in a very uh, crude way, what is the USP of emotional aspect of your film that would make somebody else actually feel the pain of corona affecting themselves? Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, I'm not sure about the media environment in India, but at least based on living in the US, I think the, the, the discussion about COVID a lot of times is about statistics, how many people got infected, how many people died, or about geopolitical, uh, domestic politics. Should we wear a mask or not wear a mask? Or geopolitics, yeah. is China at fault or is this country doing better or not doing better? So 
I, I feel like right now, first of all, it's too soon to draw any conclusion about the government's response. I think it, we're still living through this crisis. We're gonna have to wait at least a year or maybe even longer to look back and draw any conclusions about you know, society's response to, uh, to, 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 to this pandemic. But in the meantime, I do feel what my film 76 Days could bring is this kind of visual yeah. image to let you sit in that environment to understand COVID is truly deadly, first of all. Secondly, you know, the, the, the kind of despair, the kind of uh, fear, the kind of clinging to hope, to human connection, the, the needs for human to human comfort living through this pandemic, that kind of emotional tones or emotional desires are universal. That's what I would like to convey with my film. I'm uh, putting forward a very hypothetical question, Ru. Do you think that the Chinese government could have handled the crisis better had the people been taken into confidence? It's a hypothetical question. Uh, once again, I don't think, like I said, um, it's really hard for me to, without accessing some of the first, you know, um, the data points, how they made the decision, what kind of data they had available in front of them to draw this conclusion. Because even right now, after so many investigative reporters, right, uh, have covered yeah. this initial outbreak, both in China, both in China as, all, as well as in the West, there's still so many things unknown about when, when it actually happened. Did it happen not last November, last October even? So I think right now it's just really hard for me to even speculate. And also right now, at the more I understand how different countries respond to this, the less interested, to be honest, the less interested I am. Because I feel like right now we all need to band together and beat back the virus first and then try to analyze what went wrong at the beginning. Lastly, Wu, uh, as a filmmaker, how would you reflect upon what you have produced today? Approximately 90 minutes of your film, what does it reflect and how does it bring about pandemic like Corona in the public sphere? How do you rate your film? And how, what do you think it really conveys and what is the impression it will have for times to come? Obviously, I can say only nice things about this film because this is my baby. <laughs> Uh, it's been a yeah. huge challenge to get my two co-directors to even agree to let me finish this film because there's, uh, due to the geopolitics, they were in, for a long period of time, they stopped working with me. And so I feel like obviously, you know, the film could be better, but within the limits of, of what I had, the access to the footage I had available, I think I did, we did a good job together. I think what, what I want this document, this film to be is not, is not an authoritative recount of what happened day to day during the 76 days lockdown in Wuhan. But really, I wanted to give a historical record of how at least the people initially in this pandemic responded to, to the, their emotional response to it, their, 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 their sufferings and how they help each other to get through this crisis. So, that's why in this film, I intentionally didn't include any news archival, any discussion about the statistics. I just want people to see the emotional journey of four hospitals and also by inference, the entire city. Vu, thanks a ton for speaking to India TV and we appreciate the time you've taken out. No doubt the pandemic is something which would be remembered for years to come because the scars that it leaves would not be so easily healed. Thanks, Tan, for your time. Thank you.